Now, so now if you're from back home and you've come to the States or, you know, pretty much any other country in the world besides India, uh, you are used to like great Indian food at home, um, home cooking, as well as restaurants back home, and you miss it. So you end up mm-hmm. going to these places even though, you know, yeah, you know they you f- are bad. Just to get you a fix. You exactly. Know? Yeah. So this show is going to be for you to sort of, you know, learn to cook those dishes that you grew up eating. And then there's also the second kind of audience, which is the non-Indian audience that... Yeah, that's interested in Indian cooking. Exactly. Wants to know more about it, wants to maybe do it. Right. But it's but afraid. Doesn't know. Yeah. Right? They're intimidated by all the, the curries and the yeah. sauces and like the cumin. Like a virgin. You know, yeah. I'm not sure what that is, but yes. Like, like Indian food virgin. Okay. Yes. Fair enough. So yeah, so it's for you as well. Right? And the other thing that we were going to say <laughs> was what? Uh, just that we're not really expert cooks, you know, we're kind of learning to do this along with you, really. Right. Like, this is a part of how we learn more about Indian food and become better cooks ourselves. Exactly. And, and, and ultimately, we're also doing it because we do get together and cook often. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Which is so, a, why not? Yeah, that's, a, that's a great reason, you know, yeah. to, for anyone to learn to cook because it's a great reason to have your friends over and have a good time and, you know, then you have a meal at the end of it. It's perfect. And if you don't have any friends, I mean, you know, you can (laughs) at least enjoy Indian food. So we're going to the Indian store. Uh, Correct. The good thing about being here in Los Feliz is that the Indian store is right next door. Um, Now, one of the things about Indian store, one of the things about Indian stores is that you have to, uh, anytime you make Indian food, you pretty much have to make two shopping trips. Why is that? That's because the... um, you know, the groceries, the produce at Indian stores is usually pretty bad. Oh, hell yeah. I'm glad you brought this up. Yes. It's just yet another example of a lack of Indian pride. <laughs> yeah. What we do, you know. Yes. The produce is garbage. So you basically have to get your produce at like your regular grocery store and then get the go to the Indian store just for the spices and the spice mix and all the specific Indian things that you can't get anywhere else. So we're going to do that now. We're going to show you what an Indian store looks like. Fruits, juices, and soy. For some reason, three things not common. <laughs> don't always go together. I'm not sure why. Okay. And this is important, actually. Oh, yeah, so we should be getting chili first then. Alright. Um, so this is, as you can see, thinner than uh, the serrano peppers, but this is closest you can get to Indian chilies. You should probably compare it with like jalapenos, yes. which are really fat. Yes. Serranos, which are acceptable if you don't, if you can't find these. Right. So the great thing about Indian stores is that, as you can see, none of the aisles over here has any sign. All right. So you have no. If you are here from like, if you're not an Indian person, you have no idea where to find anything that you're supposed to find. And that's just how it is, even for us. So. Well, that's why we're here. You know, we lead you through the labyrinth to the Minotaur. you went Indian food shopping and decided, hey, I want a big bronze statue of an Indian goddess. Right there, there's a whole bunch of them. This is like the mixed spice section, and there's all these different brands, and you got a mixed spice for every possible dish, right? But we're looking for, can you see it, Nishat? Chana masala. Oh, I see it. That's the stuff right there, all right? Chana masala mix. Chana is the Indian word for chickpea. Alright, this thing. So it's just basically a combination of a bunch of different spices. What? Cumin, coriander, ginger powder. Dry mango, black pepper. Bunch of stuff actually. It has a lot more than you would normally grind up and make at home. Right. So it's good, it's good to use this. Yeah. There is absolutely no shame in cooking with a spice mix. In certain dishes, it's the totally appropriate thing to do. My mom cooks chana masala with this, my grandmother cooks chana masala with this. No reason to make this stuff from scratch, all right? It's just a powder, just a mix. I don't know, Nishad, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, about? unfortunately, most of these ready-made rotis are not very good. They're very doughy, yeah. they're completely flavorless, they don't taste even remotely fresh. But you know who does make a good one? Oh. Pillsbury. Pillsbury? That's right, the Pillsbury Doughboy Company makes a pretty decent frozen roti. So once again, the white man has beaten us at our own game. Nice. Oh, namaste. <laughs> Rajni, we're taking care of him. He's taking care of me. Taking care of the food. Yes. Every day Indian food. Oh, you want to take us into a vegetarian heaven? Let's do it. So we're now walking into vegetarian's heaven. This is what it feels. This is what we vegetarians go to die. This, my friend, is heaven. Apparently. There's like two guys in it. 
they're wearing sports shorts. The premier resident of vegetarian heaven. Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. A wonderful book, brilliant and personal, rich in spiritual insight, and soon to be a major motion picture. Wow. What is this all about? Well, so I haven't read it, but from what I've heard, I know that it's about this middle-aged woman, you know, this middle-aged American woman in her 40s or something. Yeah, she and, it. <laughs> and she's had kind of a personal crisis or something, and she decides that she's going to like travel the world to like figure things out. So, mm -hmm. from what I understand, she ends up going to Italy to eat, she goes to India to pray, and she goes to Thailand or Indonesia to fall in love, right? Like sex tourism. Something like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what. But the whole time I'm thinking about it, I, mean, I haven't read it, but the whole yeah. time I'm thinking, wait a minute, you went to India to pray? I mean, that's where you should have gone to eat. It's the best food in the world, right? This one. So today we're going to make chana masala, which is chickpea, spicy chickpea dish, um, also known as garbanzo beans. So we've got all the ingredients laid out out here. We've got the chickpeas, three cans of chickpeas, one massive red onion. Red onion, yes. Uh, tomatoes on the vine, the best kind of tomatoes to have. Garlic, the green chilies that we bought, ginger, and of course, the chana masala powder mix. And that's all you need to make chana masala. So for chana masala, I mean, there's obviously many ways to do this, but we're just gonna cut the onion really fine, chop really fine. Because I was vegetarian, and uh, still are. And still am. Strictly vegetarian. Yes. There are some serious challenges when you live in the Midwest. Uh, <laughs> and especially when you eat cafeteria food. Man, there's just serious challenges eating food when you're in the Midwest. <laughs> this is true. This is true. But imagine being vegetarian. Now you can't eat any red meat. You can't eat any, any meat. So, uh, one of the things that I decided to, that I gravitated towards was going to the bakery in the morning. And every morning, yeah. okay, I would have a muffin. Right? I didn't know. I was from India. We didn't have muffins, <laughs> right? So I decided, hey, we didn't. yeah, I was like, this thing is amazing. It tastes great and it's <laughs> filling, right? Oh. So I started having those. Now, little did I know, yes. it took about a year. I put on 15 pounds. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you actually put on the freshman 15? I put on the actual freshman 15. I mean, nice. I, was, I was very light when I came here. That's true. You were a skinny boy. I was a skinny guy. So, um, yeah, so it was only like in my sophomore year that this American girl who I knew uh -huh. said to me, you know that there's 20 grams of fat in a muffin? And you know, we never thought that way at home. You don't count grams of fat. You don't count grams of anything. No, right? we had no idea Especially what that even meant. Yeah. I was like, is that good? I don't know. 